y'all this morning? Good. Everybody having a good day? Good. All right. What am I holding in my hand? All right. And what is it? God's final authority, and it's God's holy word. You guys are doing great this morning. Hey, can I give you a true story from the word of God today? All right. Y'all listen to me. Um, back in the Old Testament, we find a prophet named Elijah. Okay, and Elijah comes on to King Ahab, and he told him it wasn't going to rain. And then there came a contest that Elijah had against the prophets of Baal up on Mount Carmel. It was just the prophet Elijah. He was all by himself up there, just him and God on top of that mountain against hundreds of prophets of Baal. And he said, we're going to have a contest. He said, we're going to make altars. And he said, if you can get Baal to call down fire from heaven and light that altar up, we'll believe Baal. But if I can get God to send fire down, then we're going to serve the Lord. He let the prophets of Baal go first, and they cried and cried unto Baal, and Baal didn't do anything. He's a false god. He's a dead god. He couldn't do anything. They sat there and cried and cried and cried. Baal never did anything. Finally, Elijah said, you know what? I've had enough. It's my turn. And he called on Jehovah God, and God sent down fire from heaven and lit that altar on fire. And so we know that God met with Elijah on Mount Carmel. But we also know this that after that contest and Elijah winning that contest for the Lord and the Lord showing out in a mighty way, word gets back to Ahab and Jezebel and Jezebel sends a messenger unto Elijah saying, we're going to kill you. Now Elijah's just been so victorious and he's had a mountaintop experience, but you know what happened? Elijah got depressed. Elijah got discouraged. And he goes and he's running for his life. And here's what he finds as he's resting under a tree God meets with him there and prepares a hot cake there for him and allows him to rest, okay? I put a Facebook status up a while ago that said, there's nothing like a good nap in a Krispy Kreme donut when you get upset, all right? Okay? Here's what I want you to know today, okay? I want you to take this with you. No matter where you go, no matter what you're going through, you guys, when you get older, there may be things that you go through and you're going to have mountaintop experiences. You're going to have victorious days where Christ just worked wondrous in your life all right there may be days in your life when you get older it may be difficult you may have hard days you may have depressing times okay you may have discouraging times but the same way that God met with Elijah on Mount Carmel and the same way that God met with Elijah while he was discouraged and running for his life it's the same way God will be with you on your mountaintop experiences and he'll also be with you in your discouraging times he's promised to never leave you never forsake you and he'll never fail you so you can always put your faith your hope and your trust in God okay you guys have done so wonderful today here in just a minute I'm gonna get you guys a sucker all right some of y'all already got one today y'all are doing good okay listen take it back don't open it unless mom and dad say that you can okay you may want to hold it till the preaching time so you can sit there and enjoy a sucker and enjoy the sermon today don't put it in too early you got to sing here in just a minute all right so we're gonna have a good time at church today thank you all for being here let me pray for you and then we'll get you a sucker okay father in heaven we thank you for this day we thank you for these kids what a blessing it is to see them in the house of god thank you for mamas and daddies and grandmas and grandpas that love to bring their children to church and god we pray for these little souls that are in front of us today god we we know that in their life uh, they, they're going to have some victorious days they're going to have some mountaintop experiences they're going to have some great times and father we also know that there's going to be times where trouble is going to come to their life there's going to be circumstances that come that that they're not going to like and they're going to face discouragement depression and different things of this world and god i'm so thankful that you'll meet with them on their mountaintop and you'll meet with them in the valley and so, God, we pray for their little souls. God, we pray uh, if they're, for these that, are, that don't know you. Lord, we pray for the day of salvation to come. Well, again, we thank you for opportunity to come to your house and worship you today because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And all the kids said, Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. <laughs>
Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Uh, so wonderful to be with you, members and visitors alike. Um, if you need the facilities throughout the service today, you need restrooms, go through that door there down the hallway, take a left, and restrooms will be there on the right. If you need the nursery for one of the little ones, go down the same hallway there, and instead of taking a left, take a right. It'll be there on your right before you go out the double doors. And uh, again, we're so glad to see you today. On uh, today, uh, deacons, we're going to meet... Uh, following the morning service, a heed to that. And then as we uh, prepare for this evening, got choir practice tonight, uh, worship service at 6, and uh, youth groups meeting tonight, so you bring those teenagers out to come be with Brother Randy, and I know that you'll be blessed for it. On Sunday the 26th, that is next Sunday, we're going to have a hot dog lunch um, after the service. Uh, we're going to work a little bit after the service to move the pews, some of the pews over and prepare for new carpet. Uh, to be installed and new pew upholstery here on the pews. And so we pray that you plan to stay for lunch. And we got a sign-up sheet back there in the back for you to sign up and tell us what you're bringing. The church is going to provide the hot dogs in the buns. Everybody else sign up to bring everything else, and we're just going to have a great time in the Lord. Also, next Sunday is the Sunday that you are to bring uh, the bags for the Polk County foster kids. So if Miss Rhonda has you on her list, you make sure you put those bags downstairs, and we appreciate everybody helping with that. As we think about um, Wednesday nights um, in the midst of the renovation that's taking place, um, one thing we want to remind you is on the Wednesday nights, the 29th and the 5th, so March the 29th and April the 5th, we will have Wednesday night prayer meeting. We will have kids ministry. The kids will meet down in the fellowship hall and have kids men. We will meet somewhere on our campus to have Wednesday night prayer meeting and have a time of prayer together. So you make sure you still plan to be a part of that, and I know that you'll be blessed for it. On Friday, uh, March the 31st, I have the privilege to go down and preach at Pilgrim's Pathway House of Refuge. And so all men uh, wanting to go, you come on go with us. We're going to leave at 625 here from the parking lot. Service starts at 7 down there and we'll have a wonderful time in the Lord and we'll get us a cookout milkshake on the way home. And on Saturday April the 1st, Easter egg hunt for all the kids uh, pre-K through 5th grade. It's going to be 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and lunch is going to be provided so you make sure you mark your calendars for those little ones and they'll come out and enjoy the Easter egg hunt here at the church. On Sunday April the 2nd, due to the renovation that will be taking place here in the sanctuary, we're going to have drive in church that Sunday. We won't have any Sunday school. We won't have any evening service, but we'll have drive-in church. I encouraged you last week, go ahead. If you've got a chair at home um, that you are comfortable in, go ahead and bring it. We'll provide chairs and put them out there on the lawn, but hey, if you got one of those nice rocker chairs or something, go ahead. I, some people looked at me kind of funny. I said, if you want to bring your recliner and put it in the back of your truck, go ahead and bring it on. We'll have a good time in the Lord um, outside. We'll have more information about that after our deacons meeting today. And then on Friday, April the 7th, our Good Friday communion service is going to be 7 o'clock. Again, if you're wanting to sing uh, for that service, please see myself. Brother Bruce is out of town, but please let me know today, and we're going to be working on that order of service soon. If you'd like to sing a special concerning the cross or the blood of Christ. And then that prepares us for Easter here at Big Level. We're going to have sunrise service at 645. And then we're going to have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship at 11. We won't have any evening service there on Easter, so you enjoy time uh, with your friends and family, and I know that you'll be blessed for it. On Sunday, April the 16th, we're going to have a special day. Uh, we're going to have baptism, and we're also going to give opportunity to have baby dedications. So many of you have little ones, and maybe you've never dedicated them to the Lord. My wife and I have dedicated all three of ours, and it was such a wonderful experience for us. And so if you would like to dedicate your little ones to the Lord um, or to be baptized there on Sunday, April the 16th. I already got one candidate, and hey, we can have more. Amen. And uh, just wonderful, wonderful things and so happening. And so those interested, please see me, and we'll get you signed up there for the 16th. Uh, opportunities for you to give for the month of March. Uh, Baptist on Mission is our ministry of the month. We are thankful for Baptist on Mission and all that they do. Um, when disaster and tragedy strikes, they go out and they serve those people that are in need and do such a wonderful job. So if you would please give to them, that will be our ministry of the month. If you would like to give to the renovation project happening about the church, so many things are happening. You're going to see um, some new flooring uh, begin to be put in this week um, over on the education 
education side and get all that taken care of. It's going to be wonderful. And uh, sanctuary's been painted in here. It won't be long until we'll have new carpet, new pew upholstery. God is blessing in so many ways. But if you'd like to give to that renovation project, just mark it on the tithing envelope or on the check, and uh, we'll make sure that it goes to the right place and every penny you give comes off the final bill. And if you'd like to give to Operation Christmas Child for the month of March, they ask that you bring some soap and washcloths, and we appreciate everybody being so diligent to give throughout the year. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless our time together. We don't want to go to church without him, amen. Uh, we want him to meet with us today in a special way. I ask you to pray for Jason and Hannah Harris. They're up at the hospital. Um, Hannah's blood pressure was very, very high this morning, so they admitted her into the hospital, and so a baby could be coming very, very soon. So you just remember them in prayer, and uh, we pray things go safely for them. So you remember them, remember those under the weather, need a touch from the Lord, and let's pray for God to meet with us in a special way in this place today. You can pray where you are. You can come to the altar, whatever works best for you. I'm going to ask Brother Terry Gossett to lead us in prayer this morning. Get a church hymn. Turn to page 401 as we stand. The uncloudy day.
glad reunion day. Sunday school. Lord, I'm thankful that you're real. You're not some generic, watered-down version. Uh, thanks for salvation on my soul. I pray for those that's here this morning that don't know you as their Savior, Lord, that they come experience you as well in the fullness of truth. I thank you for paying the ultimate price of sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Be with the songs that sung. Be with our pastor as he brings your word. Give him boldness and liberty to speak through him what needs to be said and done. We just thank you and praise you for all that you're doing. You're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.
choir comes down. I've always had a place to sleep, clothes to wear and food to eat. God has been so good to me. Thank you, Lord, for mom and dad, the best friends.
ten And for all my Christian friends God has been so good to me All God's people see it. Amen. Amen. I still believe God's people ought to be a thankful people. Yeah, he has been so, so good to us. We were reminded Wednesday night, didn't even get to preach, just God's people testifying and praising the Lord uh, for being so good to them. And I tell you, we need more of that. And the day and time in which we live, uh, this lost and dying world, they're searching for something, they're looking for something, and uh, we've been keeping it to ourselves for far too long. It's time to share, and we ought to be telling people how good God has been to us. So, uh, we, yes, sir. That's so good to me. Yes, sir. I mean, I thank him because I'm happy because he is so good to me. Yeah. Right. I praise his holy name for everything. Amen, brother Terry. Yes, that's always in order. Amen. Always in order to give the Lord praise. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, and uh, we're going to read verses 35 through 40 together. John chapter 6, I'm going to read verses 35 through 40. Love hearing those Bible pages turn in this morning. John chapter 6, we'll begin reading in verse 35, and we'll read through verse 40. If you found your place and you're willing and able, would you stand this morning, reverence the reading of the Word of God. John chapter 6, beginning in verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come to your house to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. God, we thank you for the songs that have been sung, prayers that have been prayed, testimonies that have been given, and we say thank you for your pure, holy, infallible word. Fathers, we look to this text today. I cannot preach in and of myself. God, I stand where my flesh fails me. So God, I pray that you'd preach today. Would you just use me as a vessel, cleanse and empty me of self and sin, hide me behind the cross. God, I pray everyone under the sound of my voice would see all of you and none of me. God, I pray you'd save the one that's nearest hell this morning that's sitting on a pew in this place. God, would you let old time Holy Ghost conviction come in this place. Would the Holy Spirit do what only he can do in this place today. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. Just by way of context and introduction this morning, if you go back to the beginning of John chapter 6, we find that Jesus is going to feed 5,000 people. Now, we find in this particular text here in the Gospel of John that as Jesus is going to feed these 5,000 with five loaves and two fish that there was a little boy that had that lunch and he gave all that he had and put it in the hands of the master. Uh, isn't it amazing what God can do with just a little? But I want to encourage you today just by way of introduction you can still put everything you got in the hands of the master because here's what I find when I read that text that little boy ate too. 
He ate too. And the Bible says that they ate until they were filled. And I have this notion to believe uh, that that little boy might have ate more than what he brought to begin with. <laughs> That little boy got all he wanted. Why, if he would have just ate the five loaves and two fish that mama packed, he might have still been hungry as he's going back home. But when he put it in the hands of the master, hey, he blessed it and he broke it and he distributed it. To, and they all ate until they were filled. The Bible says that Jesus, in providing this meal, he, he provides a bountiful supply because they picked up 12 baskets left over. Aren't you glad that our God has a bountiful supply? I'm glad it's not going to run dry. I'm glad there's enough for me, there's enough for you, there's enough for my kids, there's enough for your kids and grandkids, there's enough for everybody. So we find after the feeding of the 5,000 that Jesus, if you go to Matthew's gospel, you find a more in-depth account where Jesus would constrain his disciples. He'd tell them to get into a boat and tell them to go to the other side. He would depart into a mountain to pray. I believe while he was spending time with his heavenly father, he was praying for those disciples too. And as he is up in that mountain, he, out in the midst of the sea, a storm comes up, and these fellows are in this boat, and they're found toiling and rowing. Now listen, they're in the middle of a storm, in the middle of the sea, and they're sitting there rowing, but let's give them some credit this morning. At least they kept on rowing. They kept on rowing. And Jesus goes out and he walks on the water. They think it's a spirit. They're scared to death. Jesus said, be not afraid, it is I. Now if you go to Matthew's account, you find the account where Peter actually walks on the water, takes his eyes off Jesus, begins to sink. I like that word immediately in Matthew's gospel. Immediately the hand of God comes down, grabs him up and takes him back to the ship. In verse, verse 22, we find that people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there save one wherein to his disciples were entered and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat but that his disciples were gone away alone. People began to follow Jesus as you begin to read throughout this chapter. In verse 26, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Jesus said this, You're not following me because you believe who I am and you've seen the works that I've done. You're only following me because I've provided. Because you ate and were filled. He said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Friend, I'm here to tell you today just by a quick reminder by way of introduction. It's about following him for who he is. It's not about following him to try to get something out of this life. It's not about following him to say, I want possessions, I, I want riches, and I want this. Friend, I'm here to tell you, that's not what it's all about. And I'm just here to tell you today, friend, just because you give your life to Jesus doesn't mean you're going to have a new truck, doesn't mean you're going to have a new house, doesn't, matter. You're gonna, doesn't mean you're going to have all the material possessions that this world has to offer. But I can tell you this, the glory and the beauty of serving Jesus and belonging to him is having Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's all about having Jesus. It's not about the possessions. It's not about the riches. Friend, when you get Jesus, you get everything. Just came to remind you this morning, you better be following him for the right reasons. You better do some spiritual inventory and make sure you're following him because you desire the Lord Jesus Christ. He would then begin to speak and, and talk to these people. And they said in verse 30, They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto the Lord, unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And that brings us to the passage that we're in today, uh, beginning in verse 35. 
He says, I am the bread of life. And I am statement, a definite statement by the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. He said, I am the bread of life. I am that bread which has come down from heaven. And he labels it like this. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He's putting in some articles there. He says, I am who I say I am, and if you come unto me, you shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now you say, preacher, does that mean you'll never be hungry again? Does that mean you'll never be thirsty again? In our earthly bodies, we're going to get hungry. We're going to get thirsty. But in a spiritual sense, he says, you will never hunger, and you shall never thirst. Now, if you're here on Sunday nights, we've been going through the sermon on the mount alright now I want to parallel this with you just so that you know what exactly Jesus is saying here if you go back to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 we're going to go there go ahead and flip over a couple pages Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 this is what Jesus said on the sermon on the mount he said blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled now you say, preacher, he said, you're never going to hunger, you're never going to thirst. In Matthew 5 and verse 6, you've got to understand who you're hungering and thirsting after. Hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Well, what's righteousness? What, that, what you may ask this morning. I'm going to turn the question around on you. It's not what's righteousness, it's who's righteousness. Who is righteousness? Righteousness is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. There is none righteous, no, not one. You can go around uh, in this room today and all of us were born with a sin nature. Hey, nobody had to teach us how to lie, how to throw a temper tantrum. Uh, hey, nobody had to do that. It came natural in our lives. Uh, but I want to tell you today, friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, He knew no sin. Uh, he never had a bad thought. He never performed a bad action. He never said a bad word. Uh, he was perfect, sinless, holy, righteous, true. He says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. You can't leave out the end of that verse. For they shall be filled. Now what had just happened? He just had the feeding of the 5,000. He's done told these people, some of you are following me because you got full off of the meal that I provided. You're not following after me because of who I am. You're following after what I provide. Filled in Matthew 5 verse 6 Can I say this today friend When it comes to the bread of life And Jesus saying you're never going to hunger You're never going to thirst If you're coming after Jesus And you're pursuing Jesus He's always going to fill you up I have never met one person who, have, who has given their life to Jesus Truly been converted Under Holy Ghost conviction came and gave their life to Christ and said, that's the worst decision I ever made in my life. I've never met, I've never met one person that says that. Never. But I can tell you what I have found in my years of ministry. I've seen some saints of God stand up and say, preacher, I got something I got to say with a tear rolling down their cheek. And they'll say, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. The day that I gave my life to Jesus was the best day of my life. He's the best thing. He's never run dry. He's been with me every step of the way. Yeah, I've been through storm. Yeah, I've been through trouble. Yeah, I've had some heartache in my life. But there there's been one who's been beside me every step of the way. Friend, the world has nothing to offer. Only Jesus will fill you today. A hunger and a thirst after righteousness, after Jesus himself. I've seen newborn babes in Christ wear out a Bible. Wear out a Bible. They'll say this, preacher, I can't get enough. Preacher, I can't get enough. Some of y'all, when y'all got saved, what you used to listen to on the radio, you don't listen to anymore. Y'all, some of y'all used to listen to cassette tape. You'd wear cassette tape out. 
of some of that gospel music. What used to be the CD stacked up in your car, now other CDs took its place. And why? You just couldn't get enough of it. You'd wear them CDs out. I got a, I got a playlist on my Amazon Music in my truck, on my phone. It's called Let's Go to Church. It's got over nine hours of just Christ-honoring, Holy Ghost-filled singing on it. And I'm here to tell you, friend, I can't get enough of it. I love it. You'll still hunger and thirst after him because you'll say, Man, I just want to know him a little bit more. I just want to get a little bit more. I, I want to know him better than I knew him yesterday. I want to be more full today than I was yesterday. And Jesus says this, Come get all you want. Come get all you want. Hey, I'm right here with arms open wide. You just keep digging. You just keep feasting upon the things that I provide. And I promise you this, your time will never be on empty if you came in here today and your tank is on empty it ain't because of him I tell you this in love it's because of you it's because of you you're as close to God as you want to be he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us so if you find your place today not as close to God as you have been in your life God had not moved you did it. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. <laughs> he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You say, preacher, who can come partake? Who can come feast upon the bread of life? Who can come to Jesus? I'm so glad you asked. I've been dying to tell you. Anybody. Anybody. You say, preacher, what about the worst person I know? They can come to Jesus. What about the best person I know? They can come to Jesus. What about the person, hey, that's got just a list of things going on in their life and all these circumstances and they're so messed up? I say they can come to Jesus. What about the person that thinks they got it all together? And they're sitting there and they're dressed right and they got a Bible in their lap and they know the hymns and they've been to Sunday school all their life. And they've been to VBS and they've been to youth group and they've been to kids men and they've been to all these different things. And you've been chock full of religion, but you don't know Jesus. I got good news for you today. You can come partake too. You can come partake too. In your religiosity, you can lay that down and you can come to Jesus. Anybody can come. He came for the whole world. He says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He's not going to turn you away. He's going to welcome you in with open arms. All you got to do is come to him today. What did he come for? For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. He's not going to lose anything. Now, I don't know about you, but I lose things from time to time. There's a game that we play in my house. Where's my keys? It's not a fun game. You laugh when you're on the other side and you know where your keys are at. When you don't know where your keys are at, it's not a fun game. Lose things all the time. Where's this? Where's that? I'm thankful that the God that I serve, he's never lost a thing. He's never lost a thing. See, if he'd lose something, he'd fail to be God. And by the way, he's God. <laughs> he's sovereign, holy, and true, so therefore he's never lost a thing. He makes a promise. I should lose nothing but should raise it up again in the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. For I came down. Verse 38. You ever thought about that statement? Jesus speaking. For I came down from heaven 
Nobody, nobody has ever lowered themselves and took such a demotion in their life than the Lord Jesus Christ. He left heaven above, far beyond the moon, the sun, and the stars, and the Milky Way to come all the way down here to earth. A holy God came down and robed himself in flesh for you and for me. He robed himself in flesh to feel the things that we feel. He would get tired. He would get hungry. He would get thirsty. He would have to sleep while he had to eat. He even wept. He felt the things as we feel, but yet he was still without sin. <laughs> he was tempted just as we are, but yet without sin. Friend, I'm here to tell you, it, it ought to humble you <laughs> and it ought to light a fire under you, born-again Christian how far he came just for you just for you how far he came oh the demotion that he took <laughs> he lowered himself to the form of a servant to do the father's will <laughs> so that everyone everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life that is the desire of the father you have a heavenly Father who desires to have a relationship with every single one of you. By the way, when it comes to a relationship, it has to be a personal one. It's got to be a personal one. Teenagers, y'all listen to me. Some of y'all got some good godly mamas and some godly daddies and some godly grandparents. But you hear me and hear me well. You take your last breath without God. You'll die and bust hell wide open even though you had a good mom and daddy and you had a good godly set of grandparents. You're not going to get into heaven on anything they've done. You ain't going to ride their to coattails to the pearly gates. That's not how it's going to be. God's not going to look at you when you stand before him and say, Oh, look, I know your grandma and grandpa and I know your mom and daddy. Now, I know I don't have a relationship with you, but I had a have a relationship with them I'll just let you in on their account. No, that is not how it's going to go. The only way, the only way that you're going to get to heaven is to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Religion will not save you. There are people that's been in hell for hundreds of years that died in the name of religion. They knew scripture. They knew, the, they knew the hymns. They had the Sunday school attendance record. They had it all. And they died without God and busted hell wide open. Jesus wants you to partake, to partake of the bread of life. Now on April the 16th, we're going to have baptism. And here's what baptism is. It is symbolic, symbolic of an inward change. That's all baptism is. Baptism doesn't save you. But when we step in those waters and you watch somebody go down, okay, what, here's what they're saying. I'm in Christ. I'm in his death. What's bread symbolic of when we take communion? The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for me and for you. We are in that. When we accept Christ, that should have been our cross. That should have been our death. That should have been the pain and suffering that we went through. We deserve it. But he took our sin upon himself. He who knew no sin became sin for me and for you. So that you may have an individual relationship with him. And so when you go down into the waters, it means you die in Christ. In the work that he did for you on the cross, you die in him. But aren't you glad he didn't stay there? He didn't stay dead. Because if you're in Christ, you come out of the waters. Hey, picture of the resurrection. If you're in him in his death, you are also in him in his resurrection. And you come out to walk as a new creation in Christ because you've accepted what he's done for you.
Aren't you glad he died for you? But hallelujah, he got up for me too. <laughs> There's an empty tomb. I ain't trying to skip to Easter, but hallelujah, I can't wait. <laughs> there is an empty tomb in Jerusalem today. <laughs> Muhammad's still in the grave. Buddha's still in the grave. Confucius is still in the grave. Joseph Smith's still in the grave. You take any world religion that was started by some man, they're all in the grave today. <laughs> but there is an empty tomb in Jerusalem. I'm glad I serve a risen Savior today. He's alive and well, and he's offering for you to come. I'm going to close with this. Let's look down in verses, starting verse 43. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. The Jews start murmuring. Imagine that. They're upset because he said he's the bread which came down from heaven. They said, Oh, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? You know, this is just the carpenter's son. He says, Murmur not among yourselves. Look at verse 44. Don't miss it. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. You listen to me. Kids, teenagers, adults, you listen to me. From the womb to the tomb, listen to me. You don't get saved when you want to. You don't get saved when you want to. Some of you in here you're saying this, oh, I'm just a kid, or I'm just a teenager, or I'm a young adult, and I've got a clean bill of health. Why? I'm just going to wait. I'm going to put it off. By the way, that's what the devil wants you to do. Put it off until I get older. You know, and then when the, I walked into the doctor's office and they tell me that I've got cancer, you know, then I'll give my life to Jesus. But I want to live how I want to and do things how I want to right now. I just keep putting it off. Friend, you listen to me. You kids, you teenagers, you young adults, you older adults, everybody in here, you listen to me. You're not promised another second. You're not promised another second. You're not promised another Sunday. You're not promised another invitation. You're not promised another sermon. You're not promised another opportunity to give your life to Jesus. You say, what does that drawing of the Father, what does that entail? We call it Holy Ghost conviction. There's a tugging at your soul where God's letting you know that you're lost without Him. But He's letting you know how much He loves you. Letting you know that He paid. Hey, He gave the ultimate sacrifice just for you so that you may have life eternal. And He gives you opportunity. He's drawing you to Himself. You see... When man sinned in the garden, there was a great gulf. There was a divide between God and man. Sin made a barrier. Jesus was that bridge that created that gap between God and man. When they raised Jesus up on that cross, hey, he was between God and man. And he built that bridge with his perfect sinless blood. And that's the only way for man to get back to God is through the blood of Jesus. And you have to be you say, preacher, I, you may say I'll never get another one. But, I mean, if I'm dying there of cancer, I can cry out to God. What if he's not dealing with you? Let me ask you this question. What happens when you pull out here on the Daytona 5, I mean, not Daytona 500, the big, big level road. And somebody's checking their Facebook on their phone as they're driving up the road. And they cross the center line they hit you head on. And you go out into eternity and you ain't got a chance. You don't have a chance. What happens when you have an artery that's clogged that you never knew about? And all of a sudden you have an aortic embolism and you're gone. Widowmaker, gone. Just like that. What happens? I'll tell you what will happen. You'll die and go to hell without God. Because you didn't take part in the bread of is Jesus drawing you today? Is he drawing you today? Like the old hymn writer said, don't turn him away. Don't turn him away. You don't have to leave here the same way that you came in. You can leave here today blood-bought and redeemed, saved by the grace and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you can leave here today, partaking in the bread of Miss Debbie, would you be so kind to come play for us today? Every head bowed, every eye closed in the place. 
Sinner, you're lost without God. The bread of life is here with arms open wide, ready for you to come. It's a whosoever will, and you're a whosoever. You can come today. Oh, you can come give your life to Jesus. Come give your life to Jesus. What do you need today? What do you need today? Some's already praying. She ain't even hit the first notes yet. You know what you need today. Mama, Daddy, Grandma, Grandpa, you want to come pray for those lost loved ones one more time? Want to come lift up those babies and those grandbabies one more time? Want to come say, God, would you give them one more chance? God, would you deal with their heart while they're sitting on the pews today? Maybe, Christian, you just want to come and say, God, I want to thank you for the day you came by my way. Thank you for the day that you came and let me know that I needed a Savior. And I'm thankful that I took you up on the invitation. And I've never been the same. I just want to thank you for being so good to me. And being that bread of life that I can partake in. And I've never hungered and I've never thirsted since I met the Savior. Christian, would you come? Sinner, oh sinner, come. Don't you let the devil keep you in that pew. He's lying to you right now. He's telling you you got more time. He's telling you these people are going to make fun of you. I'm here to tell you today, friend. These people are going to love you. They're going to be so excited for you. The angels are going to rejoice in heaven if you give your life to Jesus. Oh, don't stay in that pew. Would you come? Would you come? People are finding help today. What do you need? What do you need? Come on, pray with us, some of you ladies.
and all God's people see it. I believe some people got some help in this place today. Thankful that God, God met with us today. Uh, got one more thing for you, though. Got good stuff for you today. Brother Leonard, come on up here, brother. We got Brother Leonard Jackson up here. Now, Brother Leonard's been visiting with us here for a few months now. And, uh, man, it's been a joy to see him here with us. And it wasn't long ago we were shaking hands out there uh, on the patio, and he said, Preacher, I want to join the church. He said, What do I got to do to join the church? I said, Well, come by Statement of Faith. He says he's been saved, been baptized, he's a member over at Cane Creek. And uh, so he's wanting to come and be a part of Big Level Baptist Church family. Brother Leonard, you got anything you want to say? Yes, I'd like to thank the Lord for saving me. Mm-hmm. I've listened a lot to the preacher talk about you got a time, you got a place. No, I can't tell you the exact time. But I can tell you the place. That's right. I was amongst the youth group here at this church. I mean, this is my home church. Mm-hmm. My granny finally got her, you know, up big enough and started coming with some friends. First session went right there. <laughs> but anyway, it was on a Sunday night, the youth group had met out here as usual before church. And during the church, the preacher gave the message and we came up. Amen. And if you've ever been saved, you won't have no peace till you come back. Right. Amen. Because when your friends are gone and you're all by yourself, heard that little voice that comes back to you. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Don't ask the Lord to show you something that you ain't wanting to hear. Right? <laughs> I just wanted to say that Brother Dennis, he's one of the ones that came and preached the youth group that I taught. Danny Seifer. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> but anyway, and there's been many more. But Dennis invited me to come. I finally came the first Sunday. He didn't preach. That's how it goes. So the next <laughs> But Dennis called me again and promised me he was going to preach that Sunday. So I said, well, anyway, I guess you could say the rest is history. I like, I like this man of God because I can see it and I can feel it when he preaches. God is on this man. So I've thought about it a lot, and I well, might as well join back up out there where I come from. Amen. <laughs> Boy, the blessing. So, Amen. Here I am. That's it. Well, if you'd have Brother Leonard to be a part of Big Level Church, remember, go ahead and stand. Yeah. Yeah, I figured there wouldn't be nobody sitting down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you come by and you give him the right hand of fellowship, welcome him to Big Level Baptist Church family. He's already been part of the family, just making it official. So you come by and love on him today, and I know that you'll be blessed for it. Deacons will meet following the service, and uh, come back tonight, choir practice 5 o'clock, and a youth group at 6, and then we'll have worship service in here as well. All hearts and minds clear. All right. Brother Randy McGuinn, will you close us in prayer today, brother?